everybody down here at Pesca Dam getting ready to edit my part two of the Z1 upgrade I know there is at least one person interested in how I wired them up the biggest thing is ordering parts you're gonna have to order these parts from AliExpress you might be able to find something on Amazon but they're gonna charge you more just throwing in another middleman yeah it's about one month on AliExpress if you're lucky you might get it in 20 days if you're unlucky it might take 90 days got a new controller coming from my scrambler a 35 amp controller and a KT LCD 3 for that as well I'm excited to hook that up I want to go as fast as the hyper guys you guys but I don't want to pay hyper price so we'll see how it works out when it gets here I will definitely get that video going quick in this video I'm gonna wire up the BMS and then I'm gonna just show you how I hooked up all the wires there really isn't that many wires it looks complicated when you see the wires just hanging everywhere like octopuses and stuff it's ridiculous but you could turn that spaghetti mess into something good real easy all right so all the wires on a bms are negative this is the negative wire to my charging port this is the outgoing negative wire and this is the incoming negative wire so in from battery out to the controller and this is the negative on the battery charge port. I'll have this pad here and I'll have this hanging out the front like that. First things first I gotta get my get these wires on. This negative is gonna go right up here. The rest are all gonna be positive so then the next one would be oh wait it would be to this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and the last one goes right there to 13. i wonder if i glue this on if i can just leave the sides open so it doesn't so i can kind of get a little protection all right so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get the negatives on there i'm going to remove the old negative okay, old negative removed then I'm going to put the new negatives, put them way to the outside. I should put them right there. Then I'm going to put them way to the outside. So this is a huge BMS, okay? I went way big. This one has a charging current of 15 amps and a discharge current of 50 amps. Get some, some of this on there and ready to go. Um, ready to go. up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to hot glue this down. And then flip it over and do the other side. Yep, that line is the official line. That's as far back as I can go. So it's not hanging out quite as bad, but it's still hanging out no this one's going to be going to those two those two wires there that's a discharge negative so those are going to be going to that wire there i know we don't need two wires because they're the same size so so i'm going to nip one of these okay so let's hot glue this into place So this first negative is going to go to the negative, which is this one right here. And this is just going to go so smooth. I could have left a little more room, really. Well, that's okay. A little bit of flux on these. Actually, I'm going to do one side first, and then I can clear the other side. So, I'm going to be doing every other one now. Cool enough, cool enough. It's going to be tough for you to see, 
but I'm going to be putting that first brown one there, skip the next red, and then go to the other one after that and put that one there on that next flat strip. Then I'm going to skip, and the next one on the flat strip, skip, next one on flat strip, skip, next one, skip, and then the other side I'm going to fill back in. All right, I've got everything wired up. Uh, I would have used Kapton tape, but that tape hasn't arrived yet, so this tape will work just fine. Uh, I did put an inline fuse on the negative side. This is my charging cable right here. Yeah, I just hooked it up like you're supposed to hook it up. If you have any problems, there are YouTube videos that show you how to install a BMS. Basically, B negative stands for the battery negative. P negative stands for the discharging negative. And the C negative stands for the negative wire that goes to the charging port for a three wire BMS. All the wires that go into a BMS are all negative wires. The BMS does not deal with any positive wires at all. So now I'm gonna try and shrink wrap this. Of course my shrink wrap is monstrous. I know it looks ugly, but I didn't want to cut it. What's going on? Okay, so this side turned out okay. This side just, you know, I think it's gonna work just fine. It's gonna serve its purpose. I don't think it's gonna get wet underneath that seat anyways. I need all the room I can get. I'm thinking about maybe putting some clear tape over here. It may be a little bit dark in here for you to see. I don't know. I think it's probably light enough. In the comments, I saw everybody wanted to know exactly how I hooked this up. Well, these are the cut wires I took off the Z1. This is the motor wires. And these are the wires that go up to the brakes and the throttle. I'm only gonna be using two of these wires off of the throttle and brakes because I'm putting on a different throttle. I'm only gonna be using the black and the blue. And those are gonna be for the brake cutoff. Signal's blue, brown is black. This is the motor wire. Everything matches up color wise. I've got three phase motor wires here, the thick ones. They're blue, yellow, and green. On this controller, I have three motor wires that are blue, yellow, and green. And the exact same thing with the other ones here. There's red, green, yellow, blue, white, and black. On this controller, these are all the wires right here for the motor, okay? These are hall sensor wires, all of them except the ground and the white. The white wire is a speed sensor wire. They all match up with this motor wire going to your Z1. That's it. This just goes to your battery and BMS. On this cable here, I'm only gonna be using the brakes, okay? So that is this one right here, the yellow and black wires. I wished I had clips for all these. That would be really nice. I'm sure you can buy some. But I'm just going to clip these wires here. You only have to use one. There's one for the front, the right, and the left. You don't need that. Because this works for both right and left up front. It splits later on. So just hook these two wires up to these two wires. The black to the black. The blue to the yellow. Alright, the brakes are done. This here, this is going to hook right up to the display. It's going to clip right into the display. That one's done. This one here is going to be the throttle. And normally on the throttle, this there's a different colored wire here too. Yeah, okay, I see. This this red, blue, and black one, that's going to be for the throttle. So on this, my end is clipped, and I, I'm upset about that. I don't know what I did with that, and I can't find it. But I'm going to have to hook the red to the red, the black to the black, and then the green to the blue. Yeah, that's for my throttle. And then this other wire, which is different on this controller. They're not all exactly the same, but color-wise is pretty much the same. So this one is for the pass system. And this, I didn't cut the wire off of this one, so that'll actually just plug right in. This, these three hookups here, they're for the headlights. I've never really even hooked up a headlight, so I don't know what kind of amps they can even handle. I've heard somewhere, I read something online somewhere that they can't handle very many amps, so... But then there's a way you can bypass it inside the controller. I'm going to have to do some more checking on that. And if I hear anything about that, I'll let you know. And that's it, guys. That's all. That 
that's all you got to do to hook it up. So I did get my battery complete. The second battery, my gosh, you guys, this takes all day. I don't know if you really want to do this, to be honest with you. This is quite the project. It takes a hell of a long time, especially when you solder your batteries like me. If there's one thing that I would invest in, I, I'd say a spot welder. I think you can get them for less than 150 bucks, a decent spot welder. And then you just have to buy nickel strip, and that helps so much making batteries. It'd be so much safer, too. But yeah, that's it, guys. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show you guys is you do kind of have to mangle your seat a little bit to get it to fit. I know it's kind of ugly, and I had a little bit of a boo-boo over there. I used a flap wheel grinder to grind these support ridges out of there. It's still really strong, and it didn't affect the strength hardly at all. But yeah, that needs to be done, otherwise the battery won't fit. On the other side, I did grind a little bit away on the back corner because that's where the it's the tightest. And then I used a razor blade. There's little fins that come off here. They're gone now. I should have showed you me cutting them off. But they're real easy to get off with the razor blade. If you didn't want to try and do all this work and grind plastic away, there is another way I thought that it could be done. You could get one of those batteries that mounts to the front bar. And then you could maybe even figure out a way to hinge one side of your seat so it can open and close and you could have a compartment inside. I thought that would be really neat if somebody could figure out a way to do that. And I was thinking about doing that, but I just wanted to get this on the road because one of my daughters has a fast one and one has a slow one, which reminds me you're going to be mad, but I forgot to race stock versus modified. But to make up for it, I will race a stock City Scrambler 750 watt, 52 volt versus a modified Super 73 Z1. So yeah, there will be that. There will be a race. One way or another, we will get a stock versus modified of something. One last thing. I attached the controller to the bottom of the seat. Seems to work real good. I was able to zip tie the back down. In the front, this piece, this shinier, different looking color part here that runs all the way down, that's actually metal. So I drilled a couple small holes in there and was able to put some screws in. Just want to make sure on the other side, which I don't have on there yet, I'm going to put some hot glue over these screw tips. If you use sharp tip screws, just to make sure none of these wires rub on there and wear through. And then this wire is going to be hooking up to my battery for charging. And this wire is going to be hooking to my battery for power. And this wire, these two here, they're not going to do anything. I just keeping the hole plugged so it doesn't look bad and you're gonna have to get a 48 volt charger with the same end which is no problem I think I got mine on AliExpress for oh I want to say less than $30 I don't know they screwed up and sent mine with European plugs so I got a discount but yeah I just wanted to show you that that works real good it could get a little wet but these are actually they're sealed up pretty good they're not sealed as good as the factory ones of course the factory ones are just plowed full of silicone. I guess I wouldn't take this out on a rainy day, but I'm not really into riding in the rain anyways. I think it could handle up. That's it, guys. Just a matter of screwing this baby together and plopping it in and hooking up the two wires. The only thing that sucks is I have to run my wires from the pedal assist, the throttle, and the display up into here while it's kind of sitting on the bike. And then I got to lift this out and kind of screw the, cut, the, the top of the seat onto the bike while it's close to the bike you know as much as the wires will give me and then I put it down in there and then I can fasten these two screws on the front and two screws on the back to the frame and then it's all done but it's getting real close now the battery definitely takes the longest wiring up this controller isn't too bad all right so that's how I put together my super 73 z 148 volt 28 mile an hour beast so if you like what you see here and you think these videos are kind of cool go ahead and subscribe like the video if you want um, I do post some other type of videos, so don't always expect it to be an e-bike video. There are some RV travel videos that might pop up once in a while, and maybe even a book reading video, which aren't the funnest for me, but I like to put them out. One more thing, I'm going to put out another short video on how to install the pedal assist on this bike. It's really easy, it'll only take about two minutes to tell you, so stay tuned for that. And thanks everybody for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Peace!